You said you were talking about how physical today's sport is and how your body is wrecked. And I've got a question here, I've got two questions here. Um, about today's gym culture is the main reason behind the increasing number of serious injuries in the modern game. And I follow that up with, um, what are your opinions on the way that rugby has gone in terms of the player size and physicality? Do you feel that the skill side of the game is being degraded as a result? Um, and has the culture of bigger is better done more damage than good? It shouldn't. Okay. Because people have more time to practice, so the skills levels are bigger. They're mm -hmm. better than the way that people kick and punt and run and catch and so forth. It must be better because they spend so much time in, in, in perfecting that. The guys are bigger, they're faster, um, they're stronger because it's their job. Mm. In our days, it wasn't. You know, you had to get up at five in the morning, go and run a bit, go and do a couple of push ups and so forth, then go and work. Come back in the evening and train, and then on the weekends you would play. So it's you can't. It's not apples. You're not comparing apples with apples. The game is a, an unbelievable game at the moment. Um, I think the, the the new applications of the law mm -hmm. around the tackle area is going to free up play, and it really is. I mean, the, the, the hits. It's wonderful to watch. So I think the game is a wonderful game to watch, and the professionals have just made it um, the spectacle that it is. What was the other question? So um, the gym, is the gym culture the main reason behind the increasing number of serious injuries? I don't know if that's correct. Okay. And the reason I say I don't know, I haven't seen data right. from the amateur days and the professional days in injury terms, you know, yeah. um, spine injuries, breaks and so forth. Um, when we played, there were a lot of injuries. You know, some of the guys would do their cruciate ligaments, they would have neck injuries. And people would die on the field. Right. Um, Chris Berger, Petra Jackson, two players in South Africa that passed away okay. um, in, in a physical game. So I, I don't think the data capturing them was as professional as it is now. So you have a lot more data that you can, can, can work through and say, okay, those injuries are more frequent than other injuries and there can be a, a you know, you can, there's certain assumptions that you can, that you right. can draw from that. So I, I don't know if it's true, um, but the game is more physical. So by the definition of being more physical, one would think that there's more injuries. But speaking uh, uh, to Jamie, uh, he, he's slippy, he, he says the recovery is far quicker because the, your body's prepared for it. You know, mm. your, your body's prepared for that hammering and, and so forth. So it, it, it actually can withstand it better. Um, it's ironic that this comes from somebody who calls himself Dreamer, but if you were coaching the Irish team, what would you do to enable us to have the best possible run in 2011? I think you're on your way. Okay. I, think, I think there's a nice balance in the team, mm -hmm. um, there's, there's, there's good game breakers, good leadership throughout the team, I think it seems to be a nice job, uh, good coaching setup. Um, it's now just the, 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 uh, the things that, that's going to give you the edge, what are those things? You, you need an edge going into the World Cup, you need something out of the ordinary, out of the box, and the teams that are doing well now, there's no guarantee that they will win the World Cup next year. Mm. It's a project, in my opinion. It's a four or five month project. Okay. Uh, we can go to New Zealand and it can be a monsoon season. <laughs> so you'll have to change. Or it can be a really dry winter and you'll have to play a different kind of rugby. Yeah. So you'll have to adapt to the conditions. And within that coaching setup, the detail is going to be very important. And speaking of saying, um, Otacon would like to know about the current Springbok team. He's got a lot of questions. Would you continue with John Smith as captain? Do you, how well do you believe that Peter de Villiers is performing as coach? And would Matt Field be a, a viable option? Uh, John is a super bloke, great captain, he's got all the credentials. Just kind of look at his track record. Mm -hmm. uh, people are now saying, should John Smith be playing in tight end prop? Uh, I, I ask the question, if he's not playing tight end prop, who's going to play tight end prop? And is there somebody that's remarkably better than him? And I don't think there is. So okay. His leadership is incredible the team has rallied behind John Smith. Um, so I think John uh, should be there next year because it's not somebody that is... Um, Victor is a great captain, but I, you need more than one captain in, in, in the side. And I think Victor's role in 2007 was immense. Okay. So and that's the combination. It's not one off against the other, it's how they combine. Mm. Uh, Peter de Villiers as a coach has been blessed with a fantastic crop of players and he, he's, he, he's working with them really well. I, I'm, I'm on the side, so I'm not in the team and I, I don't know what's happening within that context of gameplay and environment. <clears throat> but there seems to be a very nice rapport and respect. And that's always what you want. You right. Your team, how they respect the coaching staff, not only the coach, but the coaching staff, and how they work together yeah. to, to make the
them successful is, is, is the important thing. We're under uh, pressure for time here. Who do you rate as the best player of the professional era? era? Oh, look, that's a horrible question. Very tough question. Oh, there's numbers. You can't. There's, there's, there's a lot uh, uh, in, in their positions. Because you can't, you can't go and say Dan Carter. Right. And you discount a guy like um, uh, when he still played Austin Rand was immense. When right. Austin Rand played, so I'm using a prop and a and a fly off. A fly off will see the ball a lot more. You'll have a lot more opportunities to wow the crowd. Where the guys up there in the engine room, yep. if they don't perform, this guy can't do his job. So it's that combination. But I, th I, th I think Victor Matfield stands out. Him and Bucky's Buta as a pairing. And again, totally different uh, uh, attributes that they bring to the game. But I think as a betting, they, they, they work out well. I mean, Richard McCoy, I love his play. I think he's really uh, such a gifted uh, rugby player. Fouri Dupria, to me, is an unbelievably talented scrum off. I, I, I haven't seen a scrum off like that for yonks. What he does now, he reads the play, is great. Uh, Brian O'Driscoll is, is a special player, really special. He's that player that gives you, um, gives, gives you an edge. Um, Dan Carter, I, I, I've mentioned. Um, Matt Guitar. He's just, you know, when he's on the field, you know, you know that there's, there's, a, there's an amazing athlete uh, in the front row. There's so many good front row players. I think they, they are neglected, you know. I think that the front row, the rocks, and some of the, some of the loose forwards are, are, are neglected. Uh, you know, there's, there's quite a number. Well, how about a question then? What was the cutest trick you've ever remember pulling in a game? I think it was before the game. It wasn't a cute trick. Before, before a game, uh, we were playing in a final. Hmm. And as a captain, I saw, I, I, I realized that I, I didn't have my hand on the pulse. The players were not listening to me, and we were in big trouble. We, uh, I thought we were going to lose the game. And I went to one of our senior players, he's Uli Schmidt, that played for the Transvaal, and I said to him, we, we've got big problems here. And he said to me, what do you mean? The team's, I said, we've got big problems. We're not focused, the team is not, you know, not, you could see that the engine is not running, the engine is stuttering. And he just said to me, listen, I want you to leave. I said, I think you are the one that's the problem, you leave. Right. And he asked me to go and warm up, and I went and I warmed up in a different room, and okay. I came in two minutes before the, before the, we ran out. And when I walked into the changing room, that changing room was so full of energy. Okay. And we went on and, 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 and we won. So uh, he, he, he won the game for us, not me. I'm getting a signal here, and I have one more question, well, two more questions, but... Do you happen to know any other decent tight heads that will... Uh... Sorry, I'll read the question of this. How do you rate X monster prop we and Dupree's and do you happen to any to know any other decent tight heads that would fancy an extended holiday in Munster? <laughs> the one thing that we have in South Africa is we've got uh, wonderful front row players. Um, a, a tight head prop is incredibly important to the team's success. Coming back to my previous question. Okay. If you don't have a tight head prop, that, that does well. But oh, okay, now you have to say that. Uh, you've got a, 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 a Alzheimer's here. You have to extrapolate more about only the tight head prop. You need to have a good lock behind you. You need to have a good flank, and they need to work as a unit. Right. But if you don't have a good tight head prop, you don't have a game. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have a right shoulder, if you don't have you know, line out support and that type of thing, you, you don't have a game. Okay. And finally, and um, we're going to go back to Nelson Mandela, who is the uh, godfather of children? Yes. Right. Oh. yes. Uh, I've read about how you met Nelson Mandela and how he told you how important the 95 WC, uh, sorry, World Cup would be to help unite South Africa. How did you feel the first time you met Mandela? And a few short years after apartheid, how did you manage to unite a squad that included so many Afrikaners and some black players, particularly getting them to learn and sing the Okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> the first time I met Madiba was amazing. It was ninety four. Was in the union buildings, and I was incredibly nervous. He invited me to tea. I didn't know what he was going to ask me. Okay. I didn't know what we were going to talk about. We didn't talk about the ninety five World Cup. We spoke about sport, life, politics. He wanted to know about me. Mm -hmm. And I left an hour later, being so impressed with this unbelievably wise man. I don't want to say old man. But wise. No. No. Yeah, okay. Um, to unite the team, the, the team was full of winners, and uh, the team wanted to sing in Corsi Sigilet Africa. We, our manager, Mone Duplessis, was incredible. He brought a lady in to teach us to sing in Corsi Sigilet Africa. Some of the Afrikaans boys can only speak Afrikaans. Right. In Corsi Sigilet Africa, has got five languages. 
years. <laughs> now, can you imagine yeah. them learning? We have enough trouble them. learning ours. <laughs> they wanted to. And right. That was that was the I think that was the magic in the team. Is the team wanted to win the World Cup for everyone in South Africa. They wanted to show to everyone in South Africa that we united. Francois, thank you very much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much.